we have seen that the Feynman integrals for loop diagrams are singular. And um, as I said earlier that we will have to use a regularization pro procedure to filter out the ultraviolet singularities. Now this step is not going to make, um, I mean, not going to solve the problem because at the end I should put the regulator, I should remove the regulator and when I do so, the singularities will be present. Okay, so, but nevertheless, this is the first step. So let me show you uh, how to do this. And first I will uh, do this in the uh, simplest setting, which means I will not be using Feynman integrals, but some ordinary simple integrals and uh, tell you what the idea is. <coughs> so we want to regulate the integrals. Okay, suppose you have um, um, an integral i, which is integral two to infinity dx over x. Okay, so I'm this is going to serve as a as a, a toy example for Feynman integrals. Okay, now you see that this integral is singular because upper limit infinity uh, gives you a divergence. This is this integrates to a log of x and when you put the upper limit it gives you a log of infinity. So what I do is I look at a modified integral which I will call I regulated which is defined to be 2 to some capital lambda dx over x. This gives you log of lambda minus log of 2. Okay, so here we have regulated the integral. As lambda goes to infinity, you recover back this original integral i. Right, so i regulated, i regulated, i subscript reg goes over to i when you take lambda to infinity. But when you put lambda to be a large number but finite, this is how this singularity appears. So there are two terms, one is finite so that's the finite contribution and that's the singular contribution. Okay, singular in the lambda going to zero, uh, lambda going to infinity limit. Okay, so this is an example of a regulator. I'll give you another example. Again, let's look at the uh, same integral and I will regulate it differently. So I can regulate um, by the following method. So I, I will write it as I prime regulator uh, regulated, which is the following. So I take, I modify the integral to this. This is the original one. From this I subtract Let's see why this will regulate the integral. Lower limit two is not a problem. Nothing diverges at x equal to two. Okay. But when x goes to infinity, this is diverging, okay? It has one over x and that goes, becomes singular. And uh, the, the integral of it is also singular. But here what I have done is I have introduced a cutoff m, okay? m is a large number, m is large. So when x becomes very large, but m is finite, okay, m is large but finite. Now when m, uh, when x becomes large, very, very large compared to m, then the, the contributions from these uh, regions of large x are same in this integral and this integral, right? So you can effectively drop m when x is very large and this gives you dx over x. So large x behavior of the integrand is as one over x, okay? And this one also has one over x. So you see that you will not get a singularity because of this upper limit, you understand? So large behavior, large x behavior 
of the second term integrand is same as as the original integrand okay which cancels the singularity arising from x going to infinity okay so having dx 1 over x minus 1 over x plus m that gives you a regulated integral and you can explicitly check that i prime regulated is log of 1 plus m over 2 okay so now i should take m to infinity why because when i take m to infinity then this integral vanishes right because it's 1 over infinity which is 0 okay so this integral just drops out and you are left with only the original integral which we wanted to determine okay so this is a intermediate procedure where I have regulated the integral and when I put m going to infinity this gives you a divergent contribution okay so it's a divergent result which you already know it should be divergent but for any finite m but large this is a finite thing okay so these are uh, kinds of regulators that we use in the uh, Feynman integrals also so these kinds go by the name of Pauli Villars and uh, these ones by momentum cutoff okay Th this variety where you put a cutoff on the momentum that is called momentum cutoff and this where you change the propagators it's called Pauli Villars so maybe I should tell you so um, momentum cutoff we have already seen so I'll just mention Pauli Villars So here you will replace the propagator by okay where m square is a large number which you have to take to infinity at the end okay and the argument I gave before applies okay so these are some regulators that you can use but uh, the best one to use is dimensional regularization okay and that is what I'm going to um, talk about now dimensional regularization which means that I will take a given Feynman integral and reduce the number of dimensions low enough that the integral becomes convergent okay you remember that um, all these divergences for, here, for example here in this Euclidean integral the divergence comes because of these um, these powers in the numerator numerator becoming larger than the denominator or equal to the denominator powers of L in the denominator okay so but if I if I reduce this dimension sufficiently then I can make the integral convergent okay or finite so that is what um, we do so we take um, the number of dimensions to be small enough that the integral is finite but then I should be able to take the um, n equal to 4 limit okay because all the integrals have to be done in 4 dimensions but uh, thing is that I should be able to continue continuously these numbers, these dimensions. So it's, I should be able to do uh, sh uh, to give the expressions of the integrals even for fractional or uh, fractional uh, dimensions. Okay. So what I'm going to sh uh, show you is that this can be done, meaning we can continue to. I'll show you that we can continue the dimensions 
dimension n to the complex plane. Okay, and this is what I plan to show you explicitly in this lecture. Okay, let's see how it is done. So, um, we have seen that one loop integral one loop Feynman integrals, they are of this form. Earlier I had written only with x, not two variables, x, not two Feynman parameters x1 and x2, because I had used up the delta function already in writing down the expression. But if you keep the delta function, then you get the following. So here I have, instead of putting n equal to 4, I have put n, but then n is discrete here. n could be 2 or n could be 3 or n could be 4 or n could be 1, depending on in how many dimensions the given integral converges. Okay, so that's the form of the integral. It depends on all these parameters. Now the m square depends on all these parameters and all the momenta that you have, their dot products and m square. Okay, if you have more than one variety of particle, then you may have different masses here, m1 square, m2 square, and so forth. So this was for a particular example where you had only two propagators that's why you have a two here and we also saw that multi-loop integrals have exactly the same form except for the fact that there are few more Feynman parameters that appear okay because you have many more propagators in the in the problem but the general structure is identical so you get dx1, dx, um, I'm using capital N for the number of propagators. So for each propagator you have a Feynman parameter. Then we saw that it has to be dnl, k Euclidean, l is the number of loops. And here I have omitted many other constants because I want to only focus on the relevant integral. Okay, this m square also depends on all these parameters. Let me write x i p i dot p j m square or let's say I allow for different masses. So I write m i square. Of course, for the theory which we are looking at, uh, there is only one mass, so you don't have a subscript i here. But in general, you will have that. Okay, n is the number of, of uh, Feynman propagators. Pi, uh, Pi's are the external momenta, Mi's are the masses, L is the number of loops, n is the number of dimensions, okay, where n we want to work, uh, we need results for n equal to 4. Okay. So that's the, that's the structure. Maybe I should write here. Um, n is number of propagators. And L is number of loops. N is number of dimensions. Okay, so that's the general structure. So let's look uh, look at this um, k integral, ke integral, because that is the one which gives ultraviolet divergence. 
so its structure is it has some powers of um, k in the numerator and some different power of k in the denominator so i will concentrate on an integral of this form so i define i d n m to be the following d um d d k e over 2 pi d times uh, 1 over minus k e square minus m square power n okay so here if you are looking at one loop integral then d is equal to n okay but if you are looking at a multi loop integral then d is equal to n times l okay that's the thing here the you you have to take care of the factors of i when you go from minkowski to euclidean by changing um, by taking k not along the positive along the imaginary axis so each k not will bring a factor of i okay here in this case when you are looking at one loop you get only one factor of i so that is what you have to multiply here to convert to euclidean uh, to minkowski space but here you will have more number of factors of i right because you had several uh, loop integrals l number of them so you have you will have I, l factors of i the complex i okay but anyhow let's look at this um, euclidean integral and um try to see if we can write down the integral um in a manner where d is allowed to be complex okay see the way it is written right now d is integer right because here n is number of dimensions which we are saying it is discrete it could be 1 2 or 3 okay l is some number of loops so n times l is in integer n times l is integer positive integer okay so at the moment here d is is a positive integer if you look at the the way this integral is written okay so let's go ahead with this and see if i can write an form of this integral um uh, or an expression for this integral which can be dimensionally which can be sorry analytically continued to complex d dimensions okay and the simplest way is to do the integral okay let us now evaluate this integral uh, this the result will be of course a function of m and d and n and that is why i have uh, put these labels here in the uh, argument of the integral so you see that the integrand does not depend on the different components of the vector ke independently okay it only depends on the ke square so it it um, immediately tells us that we should be using spherical coordinates they are the most suitable coordinates in this in this case so let me introduce that ke1 first component of the euclidean k and second component and so forth there will be total d components so instead of using these as the integration variables i do a change of variables and go to the polar coordinate the radial coordinate i will call r and then we will have how many angular variables d minus 1 angular variables right because we have total d variables here i should have exactly d variables on the right hand side after the transformation i have chosen one to be r then others 
f to be d minus 1. So these are the angular variables that we should get. Okay. So this is our radial coordinate. And these are our d minus 1 angular variables. OK. So let's see. Um, how about the measure d d k e that becomes what r power d minus 1 d r so you see that you have to have a dr right because you are going to uh, these variables but then you have to have a factor r power d minus 1 because now this balances the dimensions on the both sides Okay, if you, if k is of dimension momentum, then r also has to have dimension momentum. And on the left, you have d powers of momentum. So it's clear that you should have r power d minus 1. So that together with dr, it makes d powers of momentum. And remaining ones are um, angular variables. And the measure I will write as d omega d minus 1. Okay, so this is the volume element in the angular space. Okay, and this d minus one tells you that there are d minus one angular variables. This subscript reminds you that you have d minus one angular variables. Okay, so um, the denominator of the integrand, which is minus k Euclidean square minus m square power n this becomes minus r square minus m square power n. Okay, so there is no angular dependence here. That's why we have used it. Now define define r square to be m square rho. Okay, all I am doing is trying to just filter out the m dependence. So when I do that, this becomes minus m square rho minus m square power n, which is minus 1 power n, m square power n rho plus 1 power n. OK? That's good. That's that's about the integrand. Now let's look at the measure. You can easily see that r power d minus one dr is equal to m square rho d minus two over two m square d rho over two. Okay, you can check by finding what. Uh, how dr and d rho are related. This is easy to do. Okay, so now when you plug in this uh, this integrand and r d minus 1 dr in terms of rho, you will get the following. Again, simple algebra, you get the following. Let me write the integral also, it will be useful, easier to see. So substituting whatever we have written on the previous page, we get the following 1 over 2 pi to the d minus 1 power n into um, half m square 
d over 2 minus n times the row integral which is d rho rho power d minus 2 over 2 1 plus rho power minus n times integral d omega d minus 1. Okay, let us look at this vector, this line. Here you can take n to be complex. That n nothing stops you from saying that n is complex in this. Okay. How about here? We will see and how about, uh, so not just n, also about the d. So d and n you can take complex in this okay, because you have um, complex functions are defined if you have m square power some complex number. Okay. Here you have this expression and then I have d omega d minus 1 where it looks like that d has to be integral because that is the number of variables. Okay, You cannot have fractional number of variables. right? We are looking at a volume integral, uh, angular volume integral where d is the number of um, angular variables. So it looks like there is no way we could get an expression which in which d could be uh, a complex number. But let us anyway push further and let us see what we get. So first we will evaluate this integral and um, it will be useful to have um, with us some, some um, special functions. I will write down here. So you have already studied beta function. So beta of z1, z2, where z1 and z2 are complex. There, there might be some, there will be some restrictions on what values are allowed, but this is the general expression. t power z1 minus 1, 1 minus t, z2 minus 1. Okay. That's the definition of beta function. There's a, another expression, another integral expression, uh, representation of the beta function, which is 0 to infinity. Here in the integral is from 0 to 1, but you can also write it as an integral where t runs from 0 to infinity. And the expression is this. And this is useful for us because our integral here in the second line is of this form. Okay, let me give you a few more results which we will use. Beta of z1, z2 is gamma of z1 where gamma is gamma function. Gamma z1, gamma z2 divided by gamma of z1 plus z2. Okay, and um, also gamma function is defined as follows. And there is an another form, there are several forms, but this is the one we will use t goes from 0 to infinity e to the minus t square t to the 2z <coughs> minus 1. <coughs> okay, so these results will be useful. I think it will be a good idea to keep them safely at one place. It didn't work. Why? 
let me try again um, hopefully it will work this okay it did work So and I should remove this. Okay, good. Let me check if I made any mistake in writing. Get to minus one. The first one is correct. Second one is also correct. Third one is correct. Zero to infinity, dt to the minus t, t power z minus one. That's right. And this one is wrong. I had I have missed a factor of half. For some reason, it doesn't write. Yeah. And why? Okay, some strange behavior. finally okay good so um, where were we yeah here a factor of half was missed good here also so um, now you see that this this line okay this is just um, beta of d over 2 and minus d over 2 okay you can um, check it from here so you say that z1 minus 1 is d minus 2 over 2 and minus n is minus z1 minus z2 then you figure out what z1 and z2 should be and uh, put it here so that's beta of d over 2 and n minus d over 2. Now you can, now you see that even in this second line now where you have this row integral, even though we had d and n to be integers originally, I can continue to complex plane because beta is defined in the complex plane, okay, for, uh, for its arguments. So these capital N and d, they can also be continued to complex plane. Okay, now let's, uh, the only thing that is left is the angular integral. So let's look at that first and then I will combine all the results. Okay, let's see whether that can be done. And here I'm going to involve this trick. So I evaluate the following integral. I evaluate the integral, let's call it um, um, small i. That's not good. What should I call? 
let's call it j k integral j which is the following minus infinity to infinity dy1 to dy d plus 1 okay e to the minus y1 square plus y2 square so and so forth to y d plus 1 square okay that's the integral i'm interested in evaluating because it will be useful in determining omega d okay i'm calculating integral d omega d and later i will put uh, replace d by d minus 1 okay so because again you see that the integrand this exponential involves only the sum of the squares so it tells us that i should use angular integrals and that will be useful i mean spherical coordinates in spherical coordinates um i will have dy1 to dy d plus 1 is equal to r power d dr okay you have seen already this kind of thing before 0 to infinity okay see uh, if you think of y as having dimensions of length or momentum or whatever let, let's say dimensions of length then these are d plus 1 uh, then the left hand side has dimensions length power d plus 1 and because i'm going to involve all other integrals to be angular the total uh, which are dimensionless so the entire dimension of length on the left hand side has to be matched by this so r power d dr that gives you d plus 1 powers of length okay so that's why you have r d and then you have e to the minus r square that's coming from here okay where r is the radial coordinate in d plus 1 dimensions and you have integral d omega d okay and we are interested in calculating integral d omega d and that's the trick we are utilizing so what is j then I have also so here times e to the minus y1 square to yd plus 1 square. Now this is correct. Okay. So this is j. j is equal to this which I have written in this form. Okay. Now this is equal to what is this? this I can evaluate by using this gamma function. Okay. You see I have an integral 0 to infinity dt e to the minus t square 2z minus 1 that is half gamma. Okay. So this gives you half of gamma d plus 1 over 2. Let's check. 2z minus 1 is equal to d. 2z minus 1 is equal to d. So z is equal to d plus 1 over 2. That is why I have put gamma of d plus 1 over 2 because that is what you have here, gamma z. Okay. Good. So this times integral d omega d. Nice. But now I should evaluate j in a another way so that I can equate, equate those two uh, results, these two results and get the expression for d omega d. And the idea is that you look at this integral as d plus 1 dif integrals, repeat, uh, I mean the same integral repeated d plus 1 times. So what you have to do is you write j is equal to integral dy, so you can think of this as dy1, e to the minus y 1 square but then dy2 e to the minus y2 square that's exactly the same integral as this one so this is repeated d plus 1 times right and what is um, the value of this integral the value of this integral here is root pi 
okay that's the gaussian integral that gives you root pi power d plus 1 which is same as pi power d plus 1 over 2 okay so j is pi power d plus 1 over 2 and j is also half gamma d plus 1 over 2 times integral d omega d so from this i can just extract integral d omega d the volume integral which is 2 pi power d plus 1 half sorry d plus 1 over 2 over gamma d plus 1 over Now let's check whether this is um, correct result. But before that, you notice that the moment you have this right hand side, no one can stop you from putting d to be a complex number because gamma function is defined for a complex number, and pi you can raise to some complex uh, value. So the right hand side can be uh, continued to complex values of d. Okay, even though the left hand side looks like even though the left hand side can be evaluated only for d integral values okay but right hand side is uh, is also uh, we can continue to uh, complex plane so with this we have now written i in terms of these functions which are all which all can be continued to complex d and complex n plane okay but before that let's test whether this result is correct so i put d equal to 1 and d equal to 1 means i have only one angular variable and when i integrate over this i know what i should get i should get 2 pi right and theta goes from 0 to 2 pi that's the uh, contribution you get so let's test whether this is correct so 2 pi power d is 1 1 plus 1 2 over 2 is 1 so that's pi over gamma um one gamma one so gamma n where n is an integer is n minus 1 factorial so that's zero factorial which is one so it is 2 pi so that's a correct result also let's check for d equal to 2 so you have now two variables theta and phi so here you had only one here you have theta and phi and you already know what the result is okay it's 4 pi right that's the angular integral gives and that's why you have um 4 pi r square as the volume of a sphere of radius r it is this 4 pi so you get 2 pi d equal to 2 so 2 plus 1 3 over 2 over gamma 3 over 2 okay i will use um another useful result which i can write here gamma of let me write this way z gamma z is gamma z plus 1 okay if you want to increase the well argument of gamma by 1 you multiply it with z okay with the same argument that is what gives you gamma z plus 1 so let's use that so this is 2 root pi into pi that is by 3 halves over gamma 3 half is gamma 1 plus half this is half gamma half right half gamma half because of this property so you have half gamma half now gamma half is root of pi Okay, so also let me keep it here. So what do we get? We get here two root pi into pi over half gamma half is root pi that cancels and this is four pi. Okay, which is what we expected. so it means that the uh, formula that we have found is correct an integral d omega d minus 1 is equal to 2 pi d i should replace by d minus 
so that kills that one and I have d over 2 over gamma d over 2 okay good so now I will substitute all these uh, expressions so integral d omega d minus 1 from here and um, where is it yeah and this expression of this row integral which is here given in this form and these factors okay so this one using this formula gives you um, gamma of n minus d over 2 over gamma n. Now I will substitute all these things here and get the following. I d n m let me record the entire thing here for later use 2 power 2 pi power d 1 over minus k e square minus m square power n and this is equal to minus 1 power n um, Did I change the result? Yeah, minus one times one over four pi power d over two times m square power d over 2 minus capital N then you have gamma of n minus d over 2 divided by gamma n ok so that's the that's the result but this is in Euclidean space if you are looking at one loop then you have one power of uh, d you have one uh, time component dk0 and that will bring a factor of i so you will have a factor of i if this expression was written in the euclidean space uh, in the minkowskian space okay but let's keep the euclidean uh, so now you see that um, the conclusion is that Feynman integrals can be continued analytically to complex d okay complex uh, dimensions or complex uh, I mean we used to call it small n earlier but now I'm calling it d okay so this is good so two things achieved one that I can uh, write it as a expression in d and now you see that the singularities are contained in these gamma functions okay all the singularities are contained in here um, d is acting as a regulator so that you don't have a naked divergence sitting here it's not just I have infinity but it's regulated okay and that singularity I can recover by by going close to d equal to 4 okay so this is a good situation we are in at least we can um, regulate the integral but this doesn't solve any of our problems because at the end I should take d equal to 4 and everything is divergent and uh, next thing is to learn how to remove the infinities okay we'll see that in the next video